This is Story Recapped. Today I'm going to explain a dark comedy film called Death Becomes Her. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In 1978, the musical Songbird, starring Madeline Ashton, is playing on Broadway. Beneath the marquee, people walk out of the theater with harsh comments from Madeline and her narcissistic musical. Inside, the delusional diva herself, Madeline Ashton, performs a Marilyn-esque number while some of her audience walks out, complain, or fall asleep. In the crowd is Helen Sharp, a struggling author and Madeline's frumpy frenemy. Sitting next to her is her dopey fiancé, Ernest Menville. Ernest is thirsting for Madeline so hard that even Helen notices. After the show, Helen and Ernest visit Madeline in her dressing room. Helen and Madeline hate each other under their fake enthusiasm. On the other hand, Ernest acts like a preteen with a crush in front of his fiancé. Madeline is just as delighted to meet Ernest, who happens to be a renowned plastic surgeon. While Ernest is performing surgery, he finds Madeline waiting for him outside the operating room. Later, at Helen's apartment, Ernest explains to an angry Helen that he and Madeline were just out to eat dinner. Helen then reveals to Ernest that she had planned for him to meet Madeline. She wanted to see if he'd passed the Madeline Ashton test, explaining to him that her past boyfriends had been seduced by her rival. Ernest assures her that he has no interest in Madeline, and yet Ernest and Madeline get married later on. Seven years later, Helen has become morbidly obese and lives in a dump of an apartment infested by cats. She spends her day eating cereal and ignoring her angry landlord. The only thing that gives her pleasure is re-watching a film scene where Madeline gets murdered. Helen eventually lands in a psychiatric ward, where her psychiatrist asks Helen to open up about her issues and go to therapy. Helen then says she wants to talk about Madeline Ashton. This drives her fellow patients wild because she talks about nothing else. Exasperated by the lack of progress, the psychiatrist tells Helen that if she wants to get her life back, then she has to eliminate Madeline from her life. Helen completely misunderstands this advice, which leads her to an idea. Another seven years pass. Madeline receives an invitation to attend Helen's book party. By this time, the actress's best years are behind her. On the other hand, Ernest has developed a bad drinking habit and is seen passed out on the floor. With their looks and careers down the drain, they become completely resentful of each other. Ernest later arrives at his new job as a reconstructive mortician. Meanwhile, Madeline visits her plastic surgeon's office so she can look good for Helen's party. When she gets agitated that their services aren't drastic enough to revive her looks, her doctor gives her a business card for a mysterious Lysel van Roemen. Madeline dismisses his advice and tears up the business card. At the book launch, Madeline and Ernest are shocked to see Helen's dramatic transformation. She somehow managed to turn herself into a seductive, youthful vixen. Helen tries to convince Madeline that she doesn't blame her for Ernest leaving her, but later, Helen tells Ernest that she blames Madeline instead, which Madeline overhears. Back at their home, Ernest takes a picture of him and Helen out of his drawer and looks at it fondly. He then sees Madeline all dressed up and headed for the door. Later that night, Madeline pays a visit to her younger lover. She quickly finds out that he's been cheating on her with a younger, hotter woman. He then tells her that people find them ridiculous together, that she needs to find someone her age. Madeline is infuriated by this rejection. While driving, she appears to glance at herself in the rearview mirror. Madeline is so shocked by her monstrous reflection that she stops in the middle of the road, nearly crashing with another car. She then empties the contents of her bag so she can dry her tears and fix her face. It's there that she spots Lysel von Ruhmann's torn up business card. Later that evening, Madeline arrives at Lysel's mansion. To her surprise, Lysel's butler says that Lysel's been expecting her visit. When Madeline finally meets Lysel von Ruhmann, she sees that she's a woman of otherworldly beauty. Lysel wastes no time in trying to sweet talk Madeline, saying she understands her needs to bring back her youth. Meanwhile, Helen arrives at Madeline and Ernest's home to kill her friend. When Ernest answers the door instead, she changes tactics to seduce him further. Back at the Von Ruhmann mansion, Lysel presents Madeline with a mystical elixir. She promises that it can defy the natural law and stop the aging process as it did for her. To further entice Madeline, Lysel reveals that she's 71 years old. Intrigued, Madeline asks for the price. When she sees an astronomical amount on a piece of paper, Madeline refuses to take her offer. Lysel does not take no for an answer. As her last resort, she gives Madeline a sample. She pricks her potential client's finger and drops a small amount of the elixir on the wound. Not only does the wound heal in seconds, but the skin on Madeline's wrinkled hand becomes taut and supple again. Madeline is finally sold. With this, Lysel tells her that she can enjoy 10 years of unchanged beauty. After that, the actress must hide from the public, just like Lysel's other famous clients. 
Madeline doesn't seem too concerned by this and drinks the potion like her life depended on it. Right after Madeline takes the last gulp, Lysol gives her client a cryptic warning. She tells Madeline to take care of herself. She then attaches an ornate brooch to Madeline's blouse as a gift and tells her to live forever. Before leaving, Madeline admires herself in the mirror. To her absolute delight, her body morphs back into her former beauty right before her very eyes. Back at the Menville home, Helen and Ernest are getting it on. Suddenly, Helen tries to talk Ernest into realizing that Madeline has ruined his career and his manhood. Ernest is empowered by this and gets the courage to announce that he wants to divorce Madeline. Helen, however, has other plans and lets him in on her elaborate scheme. In her plot, Ernest poisons all the drinking glasses in their house. When Helen invites herself to dinner, Madeline will drink out of one of the poisoned glasses. While she's unconscious, Helen and Ernest will take her out to Mulholland Drive, where they'll place her in a car, doused with alcohol, and send her crashing off the cliff. She'll die in a fiery car crash and they'll make it look like an unfortunate case of drunk driving. Ernest isn't keen on the idea of murdering his wife. Helen then tells him that Madeline is the one killing him. By killing her, they can start their lives all over again. Ernest eventually agrees to conspire with Helen, justifying their scheme in the name of self-defense. When the new and approved Madeline arrives home, an emboldened Ernest confronts her. They have a vicious spat. He calls her out on being cheap, and she fires back that he's flaccid. When Madeline pushes her husband to the peak of anger, Ernest strangles his wife at the top of the stairs. When he realizes what he's doing, he lets go of her neck, which leaves Madeline teetering on the edge of the top step. As Ernest is about to save her, Madeline lets out one last insult. Ernest gives her a slight push that sends Madeline down the long flight of stairs, breaking her neck and everything else. When Ernest sees his wife looking like a mangled ragdoll at the foot of the stairs, he is elated and rushes to the phone to tell Helen the fantastic news. Helen isn't exactly happy that Ernest ruined their whole plan. Ernest doesn't care at this point because he's finally free from Madeline. While Helen coaches Ernest on presenting their alibis, Madeline's twisted corpse slowly rises and starts staggering towards him. Like nothing happened, she goes back to criticizing her husband with her head on backwards. Ernest is horrified. When Madeline realizes that she can see her butt, she has a similar meltdown and snaps her head back into place. Ernest rushes Madeline to the hospital. While Madeline is being examined, the doctor discovers that her neck is badly broken, and he can't hear a heartbeat. Ernest's worst suspicions are confirmed. Madeline is dead. With the doctor practically running out of the room in fear, Ernest finally tells Madeline that she is in violation of every natural law. He immediately runs out to get the doctor. When it dawns on Madeline that this is what the potion does, she faints. Meanwhile, Ernest's search for the doctor fails when he finds him dead from shock. Upon returning to the doctor's office, he's told that his wife has been transferred to the morgue. On the way to the morgue, he encounters floating nuns. He eventually finds Madeline inside of a body bag and frees her. Madeline is freaking out from being trapped in a morgue. Meanwhile, Ernest realized that his wife is the first person in humanity to have life after death. Strangely, Ernest has an optimistic view of all that's happening so far. He sees it as a challenge and an omen that he and Madeline were meant to be together. Revitalized, Ernest takes Madeline back to their home. Meanwhile, Helen is still convinced that Madeline is dead and is dumbfounded by what she's spying on. Like a Hollywood version of Dr. Jekyll, Ernest meticulously fixes his wife back to the glorious monster she once was. In the middle of this, Helen decides to confront Ernest and demands to see Madeline's corpse. Madeline overhears them arguing about their attempt to murder her. Like any good diva, she makes a dramatic entrance. Ernest follows his wife and realizes she's taken the shotgun. Madeline then shoots Helen in the stomach. Helen is blown out of the house and lands in the fountain. Pleased by what she's done, Madeline then convinces Ernest to bury Helen or risk finding popularity in prison. Helen rises from the fountain to Ernest and Madeline's horror with a big, gaping hole in her stomach. Madeline and Helen quickly realize that they had both gone to Lysol to take her supernatural elixir. The two frenemies from hell start insulting the living daylights out of each other. Meanwhile, Ernest calls it a day and lets the two women duke it out with shovels. Helen wants Madeline to admit that she'd been stealing her boyfriends to hurt her on purpose. Madeline admits that she only did it because Helen thought she was cheap. When Helen and Madeline find the heart in their lifeless bodies to forgive each other, they finally return to being best friends. Later, Madeline and Helen find Ernest as he's getting ready to pack up his stuff and leave. Unfortunately for him, the girls won't let him get away without their touch-ups. Soon, they realize that their bodies would chip and fall apart without Ernest. So, they do what they do best. 
scheme. They try to seduce Ernest to stay with them, but Ernest is persistent about being his own man again. Undeterred, they try the old drug cocktail trick. Admirably, Ernest refuses. With no other resort, they hit him over the head with a vase. When Ernest regains consciousness, he finds himself in an underground pool where Lysel is preparing herself. On that day, she's hosting a grand spring party for her clients. Lysel then attempts to convince Ernest to drink the elixir of eternal life. She entices him by claiming that he'll have another chance to revive his career and work forever. Ernest vehemently rejects the thought of eternal life. He does not want to see the people around him dying and he does not want to spend the rest of his life with Madeline and Helen. He intends to stop Lysel's plans and runs away with a valuable potion. Ernest unwittingly finds himself at Lysel's extravagant party, where Marilyn, Warhol, and Elvis are attending. Madeline and Helen spot Ernest in the crowd and go after him. Ernest gets chased all over the mansion until he reaches the tower. With no other means of escape, Ernest climbs up on the roof. Madeline and Helen eventually catch up to him, but Ernest slips. He winds up hanging on a metal pipe by his suspenders. Madeline and Helen rapidly tell him that the only way he'll live is if he drinks the elixir. In a grand act of defiance, he drops the potion into the abyss before falling. Unlike the elixir, Ernest does not get smashed on the ground. Instead, he crashes into Lysel's swimming pool and eventually makes his grand escape. Unable to find Ernest, Madeline and Helen are left to contemplate the irony of their fate. They'll have to paint each other's butts for all eternity. 37 years later, a mass commemorating Ernest's life is held in a peaceful chapel, attended by his friends and family. While the priest gives a touching eulogy, Madeline and Helen sit at the back of the church and cackle like witches under their mourning veils. The priest concludes that Ernest had indeed known the secret to eternal life, which was living his life to the fullest and leaving a legacy in the hearts of his loved ones. While they're leaving the funeral, Madeline and Helen reveal their monstrous looks after decades of DIY touch-ups. As they continue to bicker, they manage to bring each other down a flight of stairs that leaves them crumbling into a million ugly pieces. This is all for story recap for today. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Tell us in the comments if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Watch other of our videos showing on the screen and leave a like because it helps the channel. And I would see you in the next video. Goodbye.